Hey everyone, Olio here. So it's one of those videos again where I go through how much I've made, how much I've earned over the last year or so. There are a few things I haven't mentioned here, things like my investments and stuff. I just didn't think they really made sense because they're investments. They're not really making me money. They don't make me money until I actually sell them. So yeah, those things aren't covered. But let's get right into it. So if we start off with my main YouTube channel where I cover tech and gear and stuff, if you guys haven't already seen that channel, um, because I'm sure there are some of you who watch this channel who don't even know that I have another channel. But yeah, on my main channel, I cover tech and gear, reviewing products um, and just sort of productivity stuff as well as things that I'm interested in. It's a lot less finance related compared to this channel, of course, um, and it's more artistic as well. I do put a lot more effort into B-roll and things like that. So from the main channel, if you look at the YouTube AdSense revenue, this is just from the YouTube ads, the ones that you see at the beginning, middle or end of the video. It also includes super chat in live streams um, where you can highlight one of your comments or questions. And it also includes channel memberships where people get exclusive access to stuff like wallpapers. So AdSense revenue for the main channel is $40,000, which isn't bad at all. I'm actually pretty happy with that considering the size of my channel, how small it is, uh, the views I get and stuff like that. You know, I'm not getting millions of views a month and here I am making $40,000, which Honestly, I'm impressed by it. I think, I think that's actually pretty good for my channel. If we move over to my second channel, which is this one, the revenue I've earned for this one. So I only actually started making money from this channel in March. That's when I got monetized and I've made $5,000 from this channel. Considering I only upload probably one or two videos a month on this channel and I've made $5,000 and these videos aren't as much effort as my main channel videos mainly because obviously I'm just sitting behind a desk and going through stuff that I already know so I don't have to put as much effort into them so five thousand dollars that's pretty good and it makes me think if I uploaded videos more regularly on this second channel maybe I uploaded a video a week or two videos a week I don't think I could do two videos a week I don't have the time but and it's because I wouldn't want to I don't have enough stuff to talk about but if I did a video a week I definitely think I could really boost up that revenue number I could make it go much higher mainly because the RPM and the CPM is so much higher than my main channel naturally because I'm covering finance and business related stuff those topics make a lot more money compared to tech and gear if we then move into sponsorships so this includes both YouTube sponsorships and Instagram sponsored posts so in the middle of the video you might see a sponsored product or service that I recommended um, companies pay to put that product right in the video I do disclose them every time, of course, you have to disclose them. I do say, you know, this is a sponsored part of the video or whatever, but usually it aligns very well with my audience. I get emails from all sorts of companies wanting to sponsor their stuff. And I'll be honest, most of it is just crap. Even if they're offering good money, I'll turn it down mainly because it just doesn't align with my channel. I try to only do sponsors that really align with my audience, really align with what I think is a good product or service. So I won't mention exactly how much I got from each sponsor because I don't think I can really, you know, companies don't really want other people to know. But when I added it all up, it, this actually blew me away. I made $82,000 from sponsored segments in videos, from just sponsorships. That is insane to me. I think that just shows how valuable sponsored segments can be in videos. A lot of the creators that you maybe watch on YouTube when they do sponsor stuff, they the reason they do it is because the money they make from it helps them grow their channel, helps them make an income. Sure, $40,000 of AdSense revenue for my main channel is a good amount of money, but that's just not enough to live on, especially if you live in a in a major city. Yeah, you, you can't really live on $40,000. It's, it, oh, you've got to share with someone else or you've got to live with family. You can't sort of be very independent. So that's why a lot of YouTubers do sponsored segments. And usually the sponsored segments align with the audience. It's why a lot of people do it. So whenever you see a creator do a sponsored segment, support them, you know, don't complain about it because unless they're really sort of <laughs> shilling something or selling themselves or something, they're doing it because they need to pay the bills. Affiliates. So this includes things like Amazon links, product links for other brands. So I cover a lot of tech and gear on my main channel, of course. And naturally a good way to make money from that is to link to the product and for me to get a kickback from linking to that product from sharing it in one of my videos. So, you know, every time someone clicks on it, they use my link, they buy it, I'll then get a commission from the brand, from the company, whatever it is. Um, and it's a really good way to make money, especially if you're someone who covers a lot of tech and products and services and things like that. So in total from affiliate networks, I generated around $20,000, which again, just isn't bad because 
these are products and services I would be recommending anyway. And making money from affiliates is just like another little bonus. So $20,000 over the last year, yeah, that's pretty damn good for me, for sure. Digital products. So digital products is something I've been doing for a while, whether it be website themes, wallpapers, eBooks, or whatever else. I have Lightroom presets and stuff like that as well. I don't actually market my digital products too much. I'll usually just give them a brief mention in videos. And even then I won't mention it in every single video because it can get a bit boring and tiring. And then I just link to them in the description. So yeah, a lot of you seem to buy them and a lot of you seem to love them, which is really good to see, you know, wallpapers, Lightroom presets, website themes, stuff like that. I'm really glad you guys are enjoying them. In the last year, I've made $50,000 from digital products. And the great thing about digital products like this is that most of it is profit. It's pure profit. $50,000 is pretty insane for digital products. I do think to myself, you know, if I marketed them more, if I had more digital products, I can make a lot more money for sure. So it's another good income stream that I can make off the back of my audience and followers and whatever else. When it comes to Tumblr themes, these do sort of come under digital products, but I've had the revenue for them separate, mainly because they come in separately. I made another $6,000 from Tumblr themes. And these Tumblr themes truly are passive income because I haven't touched them in years. I haven't done anything with them for years now. And yet they've still generated me $6,000 in the last 12 months. So $500 a month for me basically doing nothing. You know, I made these Tumblr themes back in like 2015, 2016, earlier than that. And yeah, they, they just seem to keep making money, which is, which is really nice. It's a nice bit of income I don't really have to do anything with. Teaching. So I do have some classes on Skillshare. I actually got this idea from my friend Ali Abdal. Um, Skillshare is a neat little platform where you can upload videos, teaching people and stuff. Considering it's knowledge that I already have, it just makes sense to share it with others and it's easy to do it on Skillshare, especially if it doesn't really align with any of my channels. For example, I have a few other Skillshare classes coming up, like I want to do one when it comes to photography editing, photo editing, like with your iPhone. I feel like that isn't really something really that really works on my main channel or this channel, so I'm going to put it on Skillshare. I only have four classes on there and all of them were uploaded in 2020. I haven't actually uploaded a single class in 2021. So these revenue numbers blow my mind a little bit as that means it's again, another form of basically completely passive income over the last year. In total, I made $7,800. Now that doesn't include December's figures yet as they haven't been finalized. So that's only 11 months of revenue. That is not bad at all. I'm really happy with that. Again, another very passive form of income, something I'm really not having to put much support or effort into. I just spend a couple of hours or days making the class, I upload it, and then I just leave it. Really good way to make money. Um, it does help though, obviously, that I already have an audience. You know, having the audience, being able to drive them to my Skillshare classes, people interested in learning a few things here and there. Yeah, it really does help. And I think that's why my Skillshare classes have been making money. As far as I can tell, I haven't actually been getting many students from the Skillshare platform itself. Most of the students are coming from my own audience. Next up is my Shopify store. This is a big one, ulxstore.com. So it made $678,000 in the last year. Now, incredible number for sure, but it's not actually as good as the year before. The year before I made $1 million. My aim was actually to make $2 million last year, 2021 from ULX store, but I've just been a bit more focused on other things behind the scenes, such as expanding product lines, refining processes within the business, bringing down costs in running the business and hiring. I've also been spending more time on YouTube and other ventures, especially when it comes to investing my money into stock shares and other businesses and stuff. I'll be more focused on that sort of thing. So I think this year I'm gonna be putting a bit more time into ULX, trying to grow it a bit more because ULX is, is quite an, well, now that I've built it, it's quite an easy business to run. Um, starting it up was very, very difficult. I'm also not sure my heart is really in it anymore like it was two years ago. ULX was always sort of an experiment to see what I could do with a physical product business, see if I could actually build a physical product business. I wanted to test myself basically and see what I could do by getting into a business that I had no knowledge of whatsoever. I just wanted to see if I could build a business like this. So. Yeah, I've learned so much over the last four or five years of building this business. And we did actually pass a big milestone with it. And that's $2 million since we started it, which is just insane. $2 million from making physical products and, and selling them online to people. It's just, and we don't even have like a physical store. It's all just online. It's pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, I've just been very impressed by it, how well it's grown and how 
it sort of just runs along because I don't put my full time into it. I have other people running that business. I'm actually half tempted to sell that business if I get the right offer. I think actually the most valuable part of that business is the customer data. Some people don't realize how valuable it is to have customer data, previous customers with all of their info, such as um, emails, addresses, and things like that. It's always easier to sell to previous customers compared to new customers. And previous customers are usually your biggest fans. They usually tell other people about your brand. So yeah, ULX Store has definitely been an awesome business that I've been running over the past few years. I'm going to keep running it. I'm going to keep growing it, trying to grow the income. But like I said, you know, if, if I get the right offer for the business, if someone wants to buy it off me, I might accept. It really depends. So if we add it all up and see how much I made over the last year, it amounts to 800 and $88,800, which is just insane. That's such a crazy amount of money to me. I never thought to myself as a teenager, I'd be making money like that before before my 30s, before I get into my 30s. Um, just crazy to make that sort of money. It's crazy to see these figures because, you know, as you're working day to day, you see these figures here and there, but you don't really focus on them and see them in like a bigger picture. And, you know, seeing them at the end of the year, seeing how much I've made in total, yeah, it, it, it does just blow my mind. It's crazy how I've made that much. And the crazy thing is, it's just going to keep growing. A lot of these businesses that I have are sort of compounding. They keep growing. As long as I keep putting time into them every week, every month, they're just going to keep making money. So who knows where I'll be next year? Because in the last year, I've put a lot more time and money into investments and assets and things like that. Things that can just grow in value without me having to do anything. I might do a separate video or something, or maybe I might show it in my newsletter going through some of the assets and investments that I have right now. Um, because my assets and investments and stuff over the last year have like doubled, nearly tripled in value, which is just madness, absolute madness. I mean, they should really, considering inflation has been also a bit crazy. But I'm also thinking of how I can expand my income streams. I still want to make some sort of course at some point. I want to make more digital products such as wallpapers, Lightroom presets, Notion templates. I was also very inspired by a TikToker recently that shares Microsoft Excel tips. That's all she shares on her TikTok and she sells guides off the back of that. And sometimes she's making herself six figures a day, six figures a day, which is just insane. That's absolutely madness. That's the, that's the most impressive thing. And all she's doing is sharing Microsoft Excel tips and courses and things like that. Honestly, fair play to her. That is a very incredible thing that she's done there. And honestly, like just fair play. <laughs> like that's just, it's just so good. I also really want to make Shopify themes. I'm actually currently working with a developer on one. I want to start a micro SaaS business. So a software as a service, some sort of small software as a service business that maybe I can charge like five or $10 a month or maybe $15 a month. Something that does a task or, or a service or whatever, very specifically, very particular. Um, I don't really have any ideas, I'll be honest right now, but I'm sort of just experimenting all the time. And I also want to take on more client work. I didn't really take on much client work over the last year. It's why I haven't even included it in these figures. But yeah, I want to take on more client work. I want to take on more branding work, more video work, photography work, because I really enjoyed it. I did take on some photography work and video work for some brands, um, but I want to do even more of that. I want to really build a sort of studio around it because I realized I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed the creative side of stuff. That's what I enjoy doing most. And making money for, off it is just great. You know, being able to make money off doing what I love. That's like the absolute dream. So the plan going forward over the next year is to spend more time doing YouTube. I've realized I really enjoy doing YouTube. I've loved doing it over the last year and I want to do more of it. I want to spend more of my time doing it because it's just such a creative outlet for me. I really, really enjoy doing it. I want to make some more Skillshare classes, sharing sort of specific knowledge, you could say, in specific areas. Um, I want to expand the team further to help me produce more content, to help me run more parts of my business. And of course, like I said, I want to take on more client work. Um, yeah, those are some of the things that I have planned over the next year. But yeah, that's just me going through some of my income streams over the last year. It does just blow my mind that I can make money by sitting behind a computer and sitting behind a camera. It always blows my mind. It's just such an insane thing that I can do. Um, hopefully it inspires some of you. It's why I make these videos. I want people to realize that you can start a business from home, that you can just sit behind a computer and make money, share your knowledge, learn skills, things like that. Yeah, just hopefully inspire some people. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below. Maybe put the word income in the comment because I want to see how many people got to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.